Is your child defiant, independent, annoyingly inquisitive? After a long, hard day of following the rules, who wants to deal with troublesome kids? 49% of children suffer from Oppositional Defiant Disorder, or ODD. Symptoms of ODD include independent thought, rampant creativity, and failure to submit to authority. But now there's a solution. The good people at Pilfer can help you with their time-release, once-daily capsule, Compliacin. Your child won't be able to form his own opinions, let alone express them. It maintains your child's ability to go to a state-run school and perform simple tasks around the house. You won't have to worry about parenting, and the school won't have to deal with your kid asking questions. Compliacin. You'll go from this. Quit telling me what to do! Quit telling me what to do! Quit telling me what to do! To this. Good morning, Mother. I love going to school. And this week we're learning all about how the government is our federal family and they're here to help us. Compliacin. Talk to your school psychiatrist and ask for it by name. It's a Second Amendment right. I don't know why someone hasn't made like a marijuana like claim on that, saying that they've used marijuana to defend themselves uh, as arms. <laughs> throw throw a block of weed at them. <laughs> or something, you know, heroin, whatever. Like, hey, I, I use Those this as a, a, you know, to disorient my attacker. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. We are just some modern-day abolitionists looking to rid the world of the last vestige of slavery. Statism. It's the Seeds of Liberty podcast with Andre, Dave, and Jeremy. Hello. Everybody and welcome to the 125th episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more about this, including you, China, at BIPCOT.org. So we are back. I am Jeremy, joined as well, almost always by Dave, who's back from his little trip, and Andre. What's up, guys? Hey, man, what's going on? I, I heard you guys had a phenomenal show without me last week or two weeks. Yeah, was it last week? Yeah, last, well, we, yeah, we had we had our buddy Jason yep, Booth filling in week. for you. And through the through, through the Twitter vine, I actually learned that uh, we actually recaptured a, uh, a, a a listener who had stopped listening a while ago. <laughs> and so and well, good. Th- they stumbled upon our most recent episode and thought it was rather entertaining and, and said they were going to start listening regularly again. So it's good that we, you know, we all That's know Twitter's a lie. I'm sure. I'm sure yeah, that was. was probably a bot. They were just. They were probably just blowing smoke up my ass. But whatever, it made me feel good. Anyway, so yeah, we are back. And Dave is back, and the two of them got to go visit with our with the friend of the show, Merrick Van Landingham, last weekend. They sent, sh- showed pictures. They put pictures on Facebook. I was all sorts of pissed off. I wished I could. <laughs> I wished I could been there with you guys, but not in the cards right now. Can't really afford that. Hashtag please donate. Um, <laughs> so we have a Patreon. We do, we do. Wait, well, well, we talked, we, we talked about that extensively. I took the middle of the show last week to extensively talk about all the possible ways you could donate to us these days, um, and what yes. those and what those and donations would be going to be used for. Um, but anyway, we'll 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 get to that again at the end of the show. Uh, so yeah, so also some some monies. Yeah, monies Shiggles, monies would please. be nice. We're uh, we're all we, back. we spend all of the money we get uh, from from our audience on this product. We we aren't it anywhere. Or any level of keeping any money for ourselves, but we, oh, no, we our only Patreon, do it to our, our, our Patreon pretty much covers our hosting and all the other stuff that we've got up and running recently. Like I said last week, some of it, some of it may go directly to me for the time being, but you know, I I have major bills to pay. Um, but yeah, we haven't, we have, we still haven't been taking in anything for ourselves yet, so don't don't worry about that. But as as promised, we did have a new Patreon episode come out this week, and uh, there will be at least another at least another one of those next week. And I plan to keep doing that for the foreseeable future, since we had, I think I counted, I think I had like at least eight or nine episodes worth stored up. So 
going to start dumping all those on the Patreon. Oh, gosh. And we'll start adding more to how, it. How bad am I going to come off in these? <laughs> The, well, if you the the one that just came out was the one that you and I got that I got I started screaming at you with uh, about the border conversation that we had the the, the the night that we forgot Shane was there because he was so quiet because the two of us just kept going back and <laughs> forth for like we for forty five minutes and then at the end Shane was like worms and I was like holy crap you're still there yeah no I forgot you were there so he was like I just want to listen to this well yeah he said he said him and his his girlfriend were listening laughing at us um, as we were arguing yeah. Anyway, so so yeah, so this week, well, we, we did it. We actually did have some topics we were going to talk about. But first off, I want to start off with saying I am very excited, um, even though I am trying desperately to get the hell out of this goddamn place. Uh, I finally have my own studio. So for the first time ever, the Seeds of Liberty podcast is not being recorded from my dining room, which when we used to do video looked like I was in my mom's basement because I still have uh, <laughs> neck wood, beard. Wood, wood, wood paneling on the walls in there. Um, but I finally have a studio. Now that my company is officially closed, uh, I actually technically have two spare bedrooms since my kids still share one when they stay here. So one of the, the big one became their game room and the little one where my uh, my trusty snake that I won in that uh, court case all those years ago <laughs> stays in had nothing going on in it anymore. So I spent the day the other day and re-ran all the... All the um, cat five lines I had going through the house because I did it you know I wasn't about to dig into these half plaster half sheetrock walls of the uh, hastily thrown together Levitt houses of the 1940s uh, so I just you know ran them along the walls with uh, clips and stuff like that so I had to rerun all those and now I actually have a permanent setup where I do not have to break down and then reset up my 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 rig before every recording I need to do which I got nice. used, yeah, I gotten used to over the past couple of years and, you know, I had a routine and everything, but it's nice to actually like have an area set up where I don't have like my mic's not, my mic stand is not hanging out in the kit in the corner of my dining room when I'm sitting there having dinner with my kids, you know, <laughs> although my kids were very, yeah. my, my kids were very disappointed because uh, one of the things I had up in the dining room, because that's where I record is I had a giant blanket on the wall to uh, help with the <laughs> help with the sound and then i hung all my my collection of flags that i you know um my flags um you know i have my uh my ancap flag i bought all those years ago and then my bipcot flag and and my uh my spook buster flag which is my favorite one the one jim jesus made with uh sterner yeah and the, and the, i saw it the giant spook sig but anyway i thought my kids would be happy because I, I i think they usually get bothered by some of my stuff but my one daughter was just like daddy i i kind of liked when the stuff was in there <laughs> <laughs> so they'll have to get they'll have to get over that but yeah man it's it's nice it's i i mean i, I had to purchase things which i really can't afford but you know that's what credit cards are for like a table and chair because you know i literally had been sitting at my dining room table at a dining room chair all of these hours i have recorded and then uh edited after the fact but i i justified that by the fact that i was now that i actually have an official studio with like actually with like acoustic tiling pieces on the walls and everything i was going to really start to uh, crank out work to try to get more voice voiceover work like trying to audition for audiobooks and stuff like that so that's how i justified it that's actually how i spent my, my afternoon yesterday i cranked out i think 12 auditions and then cleaned them up and uh, you know edited them all and uh, sent them off in hopes of landing some work because god damn it i need money again hashtag please donate Anyway, I just wanted to, I'm all proud of myself, so I wanted to get that off my chest. But <laughs> Andre, you actually had a topic that uh, you wanted to talk about tonight that uh, Dave and I found interesting. So why don't I turn it over yes. to you and you can uh, explain uh, explain your issues that you're having with this argument that you've been hearing. Yes, guns. Woo! The always, always the uh, the point of controversy when you're discussing with people who have different ideas about Oh well, you know we should we should temper our desire for freedom with our our desire for our well being, or some stupid <laughs> feel good nonsense or some shit hippie, like that. That hip, get that hippy dippy Hi, crap hippity, out of here. Hippity dippity bullshit. What I call it, but uh, it is all a bunch of horse shit. It's a narrative. I can't stand it. I mean, th of course, this comes on the 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 heels of the shooting in Las Vegas. And I mean, I'm not really going to go into the shooting itself because <clears throat> if there's one thing I've learned about mass shootings in the United States is that you can dissect it and you can go down any number of rabbit holes you want to 
and I don't think we have time in a show. I mean, I don't even think we have time in a month to cover all the different ways that we can dissect. Well, the breaking Absolutely news is not. he wasn't alone. That's official. That's that's mean, official. A, they confirmed that this was the case. I saw a share. Yeah, I saw a sheriff had 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 posited that earlier today. But somebody like that's like, what, how do they know that's official now? Like, if if they don't have, if they don't even I have a second suspect. The last headline I saw. I, uh, was it the one about the sheriff? Because I, I saw one 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 the one of the Las Vegas sheriffs made a comment saying it based on the evidence they have so far, it seems that it would be unlikely that he did this by himself. I believe that was I, ISIS is claiming that he converted six months ago. There's a lot that of was, crap well, out. That was well that was Yeah, the, that's that's what I'm saying. You can go down any number of rabbit holes you want to with the shooting exactly. by itself. So let's but focus on the argument. says that it was a bad gun deal. Okay? okay. That's what that leak was that I was talking about before the show, the Nevada and that Julian. Assange confirmed that the Nevada police had leaked out that that it was a bad gun deal gone wrong. All right, but what I want to talk about yeah, specifically let's, because let's, I've been approached by two people, two different people who are you know quote unquote voluntarists or anarcho capitalists, and they've both said the same thing. They've both said, "Well, you know, how can we how can we address the issue of of gun violence uh, without resorting to the use of." you know, the state in order to regulate things. And one of the conversations just kind of fizzled out and didn't really amount to anything. But another one that the other one that the one that I mentioned to you, Jeremy, was he was trying to to say, OK, well, you know, we know these weapons are offensive weapons and we should, you know, they're they're killing machines and we should rightly uh, shame and disassociate with people that, you know, want to keep these. You know, we got a prop. We got a problem. We've got a gun problem. And really? we no, we should <laughs> use, and we should use, you know, nonviolent, you know, non non aggressive means to shift people's uh, perceptions towards yeah, not wanting them. guns. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, use you know social Wait, pressure and it? and ostracism to convince people to give up their guns and that guns are bad and then you know yada yada whatever. And so I engaged with them and I was like, okay, so. All right, so what you're telling me is that guns, firearms, are purely offensive weapons. They're not defensive at all. And I was like, so how do you make that distinction? Oh, well, you know, they're they're intrinsically more dangerous because you can harm more people with them. Intrinsically. And of course, this was all in the comment thread of, of, a, that word. of a post that was dedicated like, oh, well, We all you know, know intrinsic value doesn't exist. Exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, do we value our freedom more than the well-being that we get from our freedom? Like... Okay, first of all, that's a stupid ass question because I value freedom, period. Well being comes yeah. from being competent and being aware. That's well being is how you use your freedom, but without freedom, your well being is a secondary concern. All right, so free freedom underscores everything. Yeah, if you're and trapped up in a gulag, you're not too worried about you know your your well being is 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 uh, has no bearing on anything. It's like you're trying to beg the state for for uh concession You're, it's not gonna every work. day is survival day you know yeah exactly well, I, I just but yeah that's that's exact that is exactly the conversation i had with him I was like okay look you're trying to tell me that uh because he was like oh well what do you think anybody should be able to own a nuke i'm like well as long as they don't hurt anybody yeah recreational well, nukes for everyone why you would waste your money <laughs> but my roads well i mean i don't know why anyone well, would want to waste their money to purchase a nuke because it serves no purpose and it's extremely difficult to handle properly, which I mean, that's the point you I can't get invaded way, once you have a nuke. I, I can. Well, yeah, but I, I mean, that's yeah, the but, point I conceded is, but I, I can go ahead. I, I was just going to say, I mean, I don't I don't know about the rest of y'all, but I, I can sit here and say pretty confidently that I don't think I could ever trust myself with a nuke. So I probably should not own one, but I will voluntarily you never say be that. invaded. I, I don't think something bad would e either I would get really mad at somebody or something stupid would happen and I'd blow myself up in either case I don't think I should personally have one but yeah if anybody else wants to have one but the, the well, what, I mean real realistically who's going to who's going to really want to fork over the money to purchase a nuclear weapon it, it, there, it's entirely infeasible no, and oh, well, come it's on, Andre, completely unwieldy, you, you, and it's not useful. You you know that the ma you know that the massive corporations are going, to, are going to want to own are going to, <laughs> want to own them and and are willing to pay for them and uh, you know of course that they'll not you know not that they won't 
really exist in the same capacity if they don't have the state to run to. But that's a whole other story, Andre. Come on. You know, McDonald's and their nukes. That's what they always tell us, right? Yeah, my McNukes. <laughs> but, okay, I mean, and I, can see, and I can see to the point that there are certain weapon technologies like nuclear, chemical, and biological weapons that through negligence, either in the construction or storage of them, can cause, you know, harm to other people. I mean, that I don't think you can you can logically argue against that. If you negligently store chemical weapons, you can harm other people without intending to. And you are responsible for that. That's true. That Absolutely. is a unique well, feature of those particular a, a, weapons. A private community could block the ownership of these things anyways. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Well, uh, yeah, no. And that's and that's kind of the point that he was he was getting at, but he was coming at it from the perspective that okay, well these weapons are offensive weapons. But They're he's not, not talking about weapons. I'm like well, yeah, so, that doesn't make any sense. Well, yeah, because he just, wasn't talking about the nukes, right? He's talking, he's talking about like semi-automatic rifles and stuff like that, right? That's what he's well, referring yeah, to. But he was, yeah, but he was categorizing them in the in that same capacity. Like, oh well, you know, we should we should start thinking about whether a weapon is offensive or defensive by how much harm it can cause. I'm like, that's you know not what that is really relevant you know what that That's is price fixing no 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 market. no well <laughs> that 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 yeah from the economic side but that's the progressive argument I'm talking about the uh, actual no no like, the <laughs> what what andre what you just said Arms that he race. said what you just said that he said that's the progressive argument that's been beaten into people's heads over the years that's what it is. Like classify, you know, the only danger. They're they they they're only used for this. They're only used for this. That's what it is. It that it that's the indoctrination that continues after school through the media and stuff like that. Fi either finally cracking this individual, or maybe they thought this way all along. But when I when you when I heard you say that, like the first thing I thought of, like that's what that is. That's that progressive indoctrination. That's that's the exact line that they teach. That's what you hear all the politicians yeah, no, say. No, no, I I agree completely. Yeah, I agree completely. And I mean, it's that it's that same stupid distinction without a difference that like uh, communists try to make about personal and private property. The only difference is in terms of use, and use is entirely subjective. Like no no, no property is inherently personal or private, according you know according to the communist way of dividing those two 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 classes categories no property is inherently one or the other it's all about how it's used and the same thing is true with firearms i mean i could own a 50 caliber machine gun if i never aggress against anybody with it how is it an offensive weapon at, at what point has it become an offensive weapon it's just a pepper way a paper way yeah well, they, they, they have no real they, argument they have no real argument and and well if it wasn't guns it would be something else guys it would be bombs or acid they like they're doing in britain and and they're taking up uh knives and stuff you don't think that people get shot in, in england every freaking day they do i promise you not nearly as much. and i mean i i i think the the point he was trying to make was like well you know we sh you know in my opinion my preference is that these things should not you know not exist i'm like okay well that's fine as far as your preference goes but the logic you used to get there is incorrect is terrible and it, it doesn't function it, it does not follow that a weapon is not a defensive weapon just because it can kill a lot of people well yeah but but well see what and i agree with you andre but dave the way you said it the one thing i was going to say is they do actually have an argument whether it's valid or not is a different issue because to me what you know what we're talking about here is again it's the same standard like cookie cutter argument that comes from these folks and and usually from like you know the people on the left and stuff like that which i don't i don't know this individual that you're referring to but you know it, it seems like either they've been they've been tainted by that or that's just the way they always think but it's it's the same mindset that they apply to a lot most different situations because it's the same thing with the drug it's same thing with drugs it's this it's it's essentially like just throwing um throwing ma uh, throwing cannabis in with cocaine and everything else and like oh they're all schedule one you know just because we say so they're they're they you know they're they're nothing but bad they're, they have no medicinal Did value you see trey gowdy asked the uh, dea the other day why is marijuana in the same classification of cocaine and the dea was like um literally here i'm gonna Here's my best impression of the DEA. All right, you ready? <clears throat> um, uh, we we don't know. Well, uh, yeah, watching watching C-SPAN hearings of public officials that are like caught in a corner is what an absolute amusing. joke. People get locked Supremely up and their lives amusing. are ruined, and you don't know. 
What a f- dude, it's beyond a joke. Well, Not that, only that, but you can diffuse you can diffuse the argument by simply saying, "Okay, well, if everybody has a gun and nobody uses a gun to kill each other, what's the problem?" I mean, it, logic logically, it would follow that if guns are purely offensive weapons, if machine guns are just killing machines, then if you gave everybody a machine gun, the entire world would die overnight, and that's that is obviously not the case. More, it just God, it chaps my ass to hear that shit. It really does because that's just that it's a failure in logic. Well, if there's one thing is. that I've 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 become extremely, uh, it, if there's one thing that I think is extremely important, it's having a a solid logical foundation. To any argument, I mean, regardless of what the argument is, it, it could be an argument against well, you know the 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 principles and beliefs that I I hold as true. But if you can present to me a convincing argument, a solid argument that either disproves or calls into question my beliefs, I will be happy to entertain it because it it sits on a solid logical footing. But if you just throw out something like you know this discussion, th- th- this is the, it's laughable because you can just sit there and be like, uh, no. That's clearly not the case, <laughs> yeah. and I can. And this is why yeah. your your premises are are not true. Therefore, your conclusion is faulty. And I mean, in this ar- this argument in particular, it just seems. I mean, I one of the first things I thought of thought when you started talking about all this was like, I, I don't know, is this person a pacifist? Because you know, I, I don't really understand the the justification, other, except for either, you know, like I said. Ha- having these feelings the entire time and having hid them from everybody <laughs> to be, you know, welcome into the volunteerist community, um, or just finally getting beaten down with them and now starting just to parrot the same garbage. Because well, I think he, I think he comes from it from like the more compassionate uh, perspective rather than the uh, the logical property rights perspective. So I think there's there's a there's a difference in terms of priorities there. But even so, again, if your if your logic is sound it's irrelevant oh yeah and it'd be one thing if he was saying oh well you know my preference is just that i don't like guns and i would prefer people not have guns because guns are bad and and here's the other one that really bugged the shit out of me um he went on this tangent about how well you know if we got rid of all guns if if we just eliminated guns entirely hypothetically speaking if they just ceased to exist then we wouldn't have gun violence i'm like oh okay What, what's your point? If we just the, had the, laws the, against uh, murder, no one would well, kill no, anybody. No, no, it's, no, 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 it's even, no, 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 no. It's even more fundamental than that. Like to say that we wouldn't have gun violence because there would be no guns doesn't mean anything. Of course, it wouldn't. It's a tautology. That, that that doesn't mean any. It's it's an entirely meaningless non sequitur. Yeah, like, exactly. If everybody if everybody, okay, everybody has tanks, the, yeah, the murder rate would. Well, I mean, if everybody had tanks, the murder rate with tanks would go through the roof because everybody has tanks. That's not the point. Correct. Yeah, it would be the, insane. The issue, the issue should be mass violence is what we're trying to correct. So we have to, say, to say that we're... in the United States. I mean, you're not taking any yeah, guns. That's, it's a joke. And that's the other thing because I actually, I actually did, I actually broke down the numbers in my response to him. And the number of homicides with firearms as compared to the number of deaths total in, I think it was 2014 was what I got figures for, right? 0.4% of people that died in 2014 were killed because of homicides in the United States with guns. 0.4%. That's it. We need to burn everyone's constitutional right to bear arms to completely to the ground because of that. Oh, wait. Is that because the minute the government gets all of the guns, they're going to hammer down everything they want? Oh, well, that's now right. to now 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 to his credit, he did say that he also wants the government to disarm too. But okay, this is like a completely nonsensical thing well yeah that well yeah i was before he even said that i was thinking that it even if you you know even if you overlook the lack of logic behind the the whole premise of this argument it's like okay let's just play it out in real time and see number one is this even feasible no so right there probably should just scrap that idea bud but secondly even if you want to even if you want to entertain the idea that it's feasible it's like well Let's look at, you know, say history. Does prohibition of any kind ever actually work to stamp out the problem that they or the the, the purported problem rather? Because it's usually not actually a problem except for the government. Yeah. Um, no. No. <laughs> you know, I made a post well, about you know, that the like other I day. Said, like I said, to his credit, like to they're his going credit, after these he wasn't, bump stocks now. <clears throat> well, yeah. no, to his credit, he wasn't talking about government action. So I will give him that. I will. I will 
happily concede that point that he was just talking about changing social attitudes. But at the same time, I'm in the his media. entire basis for doing it is just complete and utter nonsense. Gobbledygook. But why? Why? Why I'm in the would name you? Of a Vidati camp, which is I, I think everyone should have a gun. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm all for that. If it was except it, for except for the state agents you know if they want one they can have one that's fine but yeah i think that e e people uh, i don't know yeah this guy does seem very confused because <laughs> that's what he, i'm saying even like he's he's talking about he's talking about in terms of nap violation i'm like what violates the nap to have a firearm yeah. like how is how is a firearm aggressive like he's imputing motive and purpose to something that is an inanimate object if i yeah if i if i had a rocket launcher laying on the floor behind me and I left it there for the entire show. Oh, God, get show. out of the house. Now, again, oh God, get out of the as house. we spoke, it's as gonna we, kill you. as we spoke earlier, no, have you, know, you heard of I may do something stupid auditoriums being vacated because someone thought they saw a gun, like just saw one, not well, no, that I, someone was waving one around or anything. Just, hey, holy shit. They well, got people so spooked in like European countries that if they, if they see anybody not in a fancy costume having a gun, they flip their shit. Probably not in Poland, but Poland is based as fuck. So, I mean, uh, maybe they, not in Poland, but they have to adhere to EU they are gun very, laws because, well, they're, yeah, they are very, they're, they're much more restrictive over there, obviously, which of course, as we've brought up in recent shows, was always one of my number one arguments when people talk about, you know, when it comes to, whether it comes to violence from immigrants or anything else or, or all the other bad things that are happening in, in over there. I'm like, yeah, because they, they don't, they don't have guns. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it happens over there. Those people have already been neutered enough that when trouble comes to town, they can't do anything about it. Um, although it's, it's interesting. You brought up the Dave, you brought up, you know, the, 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 I guess it's up to 400, 400 million. Now the, the number I always used to hear was 300 million, but 400 million guns in the country. Uh, that might be, that may be true. Cause I know gun sales went up tremendously over the past couple of terms. Last, of last, figure last I saw number was 120 I guns per 100 people. Yeah, so make of that what you will. But yeah, but I, I did see another couple of headlines recently, and I don't think that I think one of them was a more conservative site too. I'd have to check I that again. I know personally, but, uh, I've given six people guns that haven't had guns before, just throughout my life. I, I know, but we're so. But hold on, but 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 as we as Andre was pointing out this, you know, through the, most of what he was talking about, you know, logic is important. So that's anecdotal. It's it's great, but you know, hold on, just give me one second to finish my thought first, Dave, though is that um the couple of things i saw in the past cup past day or two was actually there is you know that no, they weren't disputing the number of guns but the number of owners actually shrank not that it it was actually less than it had been reported beforehand so it's actually it's more concentrated because you got to remember when you're talking about all those guns it's also taking things into consideration like the poor people who get swatted over you know cuz somebody calls calls them a threat and then they go down find like a giant arsenal in their basement and then they're arrested even though again as we've been talking about they haven't done anything to anybody those they may have hundreds thousands of weapons oh, yeah. but There's they're like just some sitting there very limit <laughs> yeah they're just sitting there in these people's basement or unless in their you're a gun bunker dealer, or whatever like a legit one on the book well that's that's the problem that's what they usually you know they usually try to bust them with among other things they try to claim that they were selling them instead of it's like no man they were all mine but you know, so so there are a lot of stockpiles that are concentrated a small amount of hands. Because I still think that, unfortunately, I think there's way too many people out here that don't have anything or or any wish to have anything because they already are in that mindset that they think it. You know, it's already been drilled into them that they're bad. That these things are only meant for killing. You know, these are the people that lap up the speeches by like like the one the idiot fucking prince andrew gave here in new york uh, after he passed that safe act that horrible horrible fucking piece like i mean all legislation i think is garbage but this was like you know when they when he tried to like outdo everybody after sandy hook even though it didn't take place here in new york he just had to one up everybody <laughs> oh australia just stricken their gun laws because because of stricken. nevada how how could so, they stricken them at it? they already don't, oh, they, don't they already not so allow them at all cut don't they already not? No, no, you can have hunting rifles and stuff. Like some of those areas in Australia, if you don't have a gun, good luck. Well, the outback, sure. But anywhere else, I thought I thought gun ownership was pretty much banned to begin with there. It's it's pretty it's pretty dirty. Like you can very few people can have guns. Very few. 
keep them stored in yeah, certain but ways. No, I know that, that's that's come, how, like arrest you. That's how I thought it was. You're saying they've made it even worse now since. But that's the slow boiling frog water scenario where they slowly. It's like you can still have your guns, but as long as you obey these rules, it's like, well, if we're obeying the Constitution and you're a, co- a government that's you're a state that has a government that's built off of the Constitution. You shouldn't be able to take anything from me because I'm not part of that government. That that document only governs that government. I have True. no. Okay. I'm not in that government. True, but so you're t- even if I was, it says that you can't restrict my right to bear arms in there. Yeah. So bearing arms means arms is an armament is a very vague term. It means anything that can be used as a weapon. So literally, if they prohibit the use of anything that could be used a weapon as a weapon, they are it's a second amendment right. I don't know why someone hasn't made like a marijuana like claim on that saying that they've used marijuana to defend themselves uh as arms. <laughs> throw throw a block prohib- of weed at them. <laughs> or something, you know. Heroin, whatever. Like, I, hey, I, I use the this as a, uh, uh, you know, to disorient my attacker. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. But theoretically, anything could be arms, a pen, anything. So, well, theoretically, yeah. the Second Amendment should should stop the government from prohibiting everything. But they're semantically not right, and they uh, well, arbitrarily dictate and and enforce at a well whim. no but it's it's on to people who aren't even signed or anything with their government it's a joke well of course it is but the you 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 spoke about it when you were talking about australia the whole frog in the boiling pot it's the same thing here it's like with everything else the the united states government on the whole has had the opportunity as one of the younger nations in the world you know <laughs> Um, and the, and the, and the, and one of the smallest ones to the, you know, big to the part, you know, with the party, they're still not what, you know, 200 something years. That's nothing in the ter- in terms of history. They got to watch everybody else, how they screwed up and they've been playing the long game with everything. And it's the same thing with that here. I mean, what was, what, what is it? The Dick Act? Was that, what was that? Was that uh, 1906, 1907, 1909, maybe somewhere in there. I think that was the first one that uh, if you follow the trail of gun reg- regulations, I think that was like one of the first major ones that ever black people from owning firearms or something i I don't remember the exact terms of but i just i remember the name obviously because it stands out and i know it was sometime in that time time frame but if you trace the lineage of the first gun laws in the country were that yeah preventing minorities yeah uh, non-property owners or something like that yeah but that has um you know if you follow that back the same thing has been happening here it's been happening very slowly which is why now Mm -hmm. it's so easy for seemingly not just, you know, seemingly intelligent people, people that uh, on plenty of other topics are, you know, pretty spot on or or at least have a very good grasp of what's going on to fall for the the rhetoric that's be that's been pushed for the longest time because that has been the push for the longest time because that's always the push of any government they owe any government always wants its citizenry you know d- d- no matter how bele- benevolent they claim Docile to be yeah they and exactly controllable so it's think it, about it as like a chicken coop you don't want chickens with guns like you don't want them like uh, okay you don't want your roosters with spurs on them in a, in an attack mode every time you go out there to feed them you know what i'm saying <laughs> well, of and that's so. what when they have guns that's it oh um speaking speaking of the dick act i just looked it up actually it's specifically it's about the federalization of the national guard or the state militias Oh, is that the? Why, why, so I, I, I haven't. The I haven't done any research into what specifically it uh, talks about in terms of gun regulations. But specific, the the purpose of the act was to resolve the question that was left unresolved in the militia acts of 1792, where it wasn't clear whether the federal government could forcibly take command of a state militia. Yes. That, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because at the because at the at the at the time prior to that prior to the signing of the act, um, state militias could refuse federal service. That actually happened in the War of eighteen twelve and the Mexican American War. Yes, that's true. And yeah, and I and and I think the tie into it is the fact that yeah that now they I think that the Dick Act compels like now they are allowed or quote unquote allowed to do that right they can you know you're not allowed to right, refuse anymore correct. so it assen- it essentially turns anybody who wants to be a militiaman into uh, a, a slave at some point to the state once yeah either they, you're either you're a National Guardsman or you're not militia and too bad 
Yeah. And that, that was where it started. You know, that's where they started to be able to chip away at adding more regulations over the years because it's like, oh, you know, this Second Amendment, it's not absolute. We've already done this, you know, and that's just how they do anything else. And because I saw something else too, I, I saw already that some, I think somebody, I'm sure some Democrat, tried to th- hastily throw up a bill already now, like banning bump, uh, what is it, bump stocks because of, the claims that what the you know what the shooter was doing and all that stuff in Vegas. Uh-huh. Uh so, you know, something like that. And then I also quickly saw a couple of opinion pieces from, you know, diff- plenty of different viewpoints. They're all basically saying the same thing. It's like, yeah, this is just them floating that to see how much they can get away with cuz yeah, that's what they do. Anytime there's a crisis, government just, you know, they mm-hmm. you know, like just just like with Sandy Hook when what was it Feinstein got out and talked about the bill that she had had in her desk and when she says that she's not using hyperbole. They really have these things sitting around waiting for these opportunities. <laughs> and it's just like, okay. Oh yeah. All we got to do is change a word here, change a word, you know, if it's, you know, whatever whatever piece of the gun it was that last time. Okay, we just have to change that out for bump stock and everyone in here. Okay, here we go. This is ready to go. And uh, you know, just to see what you can get away with in the in the aftermath of these situations where people's emotions on both sides are on edge. And you see that more people unfortunately tend to become more susceptible to this BS the more often it happens. Because I, I know plenty of completely reasonable people who normally, you know, may not own guns themselves, but are normally like, yeah, I don't have a problem with people owning guns as long as they're not trying to hurt me with them I don't, or anybody else. I don't really care, you know. And then a mass shooting happens and suddenly like, oh, guns are terrible. Guns are just well, they, they They're s- evil. They start asking a lot more questions again and going, well, what if? And then maybe that's what leads to somebody like this person you're talking about, Andre, who starts asking questions like this. It's because like, is the basically the destruction of this type of technology, you know, guns, um, is this basically like, is that actually a feasible thing? Or is that, you know, just on its face, is that not just a utopian idea in and of itself? Like, do you really need well, to investigate that, that very far? And not only that, but it ends up, it ends up nine times out of 10, or at least it's been my experience. So of course, this is an anecdote. It may not be the case for everybody. But it's been my experience that every time this conversation gets brought up, it ends up being an ethical argument from empiricism, which doesn't make any sense. You can't argue ethics from empirical data. Ethic, you can argue ethics from, from a logical perspective if you want to be consistent, can't but empirical data doesn't, doesn't allow you to arrive at universal ethical, you know, universal ethical standards. That's not the way ethics hmm. works. I mean, just the uh, Jeremy game, Bentham man. would probably argue with me, but Jeremy Bentham is an asshole, and I'm glad he's dead. <laughs> Fuck legal positivism. Did I just did I just see something about him recently? Something about his skull? Was that him? Uh, well, he's actually on display. Yeah, at, uh, it God, was him. Right? He's, he's either Cambridge or Oxford. I can't remember. Yeah, where. one of the <laughs> two. And there was some. There was there was some article I just saw, like literally, like two days ago, because like that name was in my head because you've mentioned him multiple times recently over the past couple of weeks. So like now it was like stuck in my head, and I just happened to catch a headline, and there was like some weird ass picture of like the top of his skull from wherever they have him on display. But I can't I can't remember the story now. But it, okay, so it definitely was him. I got to go find that again. <laughs> I do know <laughs> that they used to keep his skull in a box over the uh, top of, like, over the door frame and one of the doors that led into the hall where they now have a uh, wax figure on display um, of him. And at one point, his head actually got stolen. That box actually got taken. I think it was like an inner college type prank thing. Oh, like still in the mask. Eventually, still it was mask returned mask. Yeah. and they, they, yeah, they, they put it under lock and key behind that display. So. Oh, yeah, no, I was just that leave was it just, to, leave it to college students. Leave it to college students from competing colleges to steal things like a human skull. Well, like, uh, that <laughs> that sums it up. It's but it's well, they I mean, everything. It's just like the you know, it starts with the mascots, and then they try to you know anything else that's important to this girl. You see it happen all the time. And it's great. then suddenly we're at human skulls. Hey, you know. <laughs> Never mind. What so, can you do? <laughs> boys will be boys. <laughs> Making me. Like for some reason the that cheesy ass pretty bad movie Wild Wild West. <laughs> you guys remember that one? Oh, Will Smith. oh boy, that oh, one's hard my to God. watch. But the one, just the one yeah. scene. The when you said that, the one scene popped into my head where Will Smith just going that that's a human head. It, it's a head. It just keeps going over and over again because you can't because <laughs> you can't fathom how people would just be have no problem with this. Oh, I'll just pick up a head. I'll just pick up a skull. No big deal. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> 
Anyway, so yeah. Now so, that I've gone off on my tangent. No, that's fine. And, uh, it's, it, well, no, it turned into a larger thing, but you know, we ended up talking about government and stuff. But I mean, yeah. I, well, I, I mean, that's of course that's what it always comes down. Well, to. yeah, because really, what this ends up being. That that's obviously the other flaw in in this person or or anybody who would make this type of argument in, in that argument you know right, again right there when you just put reality into play if you just like try to apply it right away it's like okay yeah you would want government to give up your guns but that's not how seats of power work when you have them you don't want to give them up so nobody's going to willingly give those up while the states well the state or, or multiple states or whatever you know all exist currently so that's not really an option whether you know wh- whether people want to think that you can't defend yourself against the government with the weapons that you're for the most part quote unquote allowed to have currently it still doesn't mean you shouldn't have them to try so uh, as long as they as long as the state exists it's in, it's 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 impossible like that is it's just that is a utopian idea getting rid of guns at this point in history because again when they when they started being created well, 3d printers you know well, well yeah aside from the well aside from the fact that the other point we mentioned even if you just removed 3d printers from the ball game you're right you know what i'm saying you add that you're at like you're de facto unprovable well yeah you know because saying? yeah that i was yeah that's what i was saying like the point we brought up earlier about prohibition it doesn't work it never works why because people are going to go after what they want especially people who are or even are just feeling like they are being oppressed by some type of tyranny that you're never going to be able to stop people who want to get whatever it is uh, especially guns and now yeah, exact and your point is exactly right dave now in this day and age with the 3d printer you know and the ghost gunners it's game over, man. Even if, even game if game over, man. man. Even if game they, over. Even if they, even if they, even if they somehow shut down Cody Wilson and Defense Distributed, I have known people who at one point had their own before his even hit the market. I've seen them in action. These things have been around. People, this capability is not really that you know it's not as new as people think because people were doing this beforehand they just uh all it takes is a cnc machine that's exactly i mean even if you don't have a 3d printer you can if you have a cnc machine which you can and there's no one they're they're expensive stop that well did you guys expensive don't get me wrong but you can purchase one and you, you can manage to create your own it's not that hard these machines are not like these incredibly over complex things that like nobody can figure out no, absolutely okay. not. Like, like I said, people were doing it before the the fancier, like more quote unquote mainstream one, which is which is which is the ghost gunner. Which actually, speaking of that, did you guys see? I think he had the handgun version came out. He has that. No, he, I, I didn't. I think what? that last. Oh yeah, last week. I think they unveiled that. Oh, oh shit. yeah. <laughs> Things. Dude. Are, oh man. Yeah. Oh they are, man. Uh, what a time to be alive. Yep. They uh they're doing great, they're doing great <laughs> you just things. Throw down a block there. of aluminum and it it shits out a it shits out a handgun. So insane. So they are uh, yeah man it's it's great. But like but like you said even with even you know you said it before Dave even if you even if you take some of the stuff out of the equation it's you still can't stop it. And the more no. government tries to get in the way of this, it's like cryptocurrency. The cat is out of the bag, man. The yeah the but the the only the only thing that can still thwart that thwart the whole movement or at least impede it for the time being is what we were talking about earlier with you know more people that seem to get won over by these um, you know emotional arguments that have no logical basis whatsoever <laughs> more the more this happens like i said the more people that i i know i've seen it happen i'm sure you guys have seen it too you know you're talking about you know andre this person you're talking about too possibly has had more of a shift because of stuff like this too it's just that's the only thing that can can keep this keep the evolution from happening at at the same at, at, at a high clip i guess is that. yeah it, it, it's yeah it's just it's playing on people's emotions either and what honestly what i think it is is without being constantly barraged by the this line of thinking uh this guy i was talking while i was talking with probably wouldn't have really put that much thought or effort into it he probably would have been the same as like the guy the guys that you were talking about like oh well i mean if you want to own a gun sure whatever it's not my deal but hey freedom yeah. man <laughs> exactly so. what what other thing i want to mention since we're talking about uh, uh sure. using weapons to protect ourselves against government <sighs> I if I hear another person say, "Well, they have heat-seeking drones," uh, so what's the point? 
if it's I hear really another an one argument. of those fucking arguments, if I hear another one of those arguments, I am going to bash my skull into a wall. We uh, at this point, at this point, there should be enough empirical examples of how a smaller and less well equipped fighting force can fight a war on a successful war of attrition against a larger, more better equipped force. Like at, at this point, this should not be in question. See. Thank, thank you for saying that, Andre. Because like, I, well, I fuck here also like counter counterinsurgency is like the the corner or has been the cornerstone of U.S. military tactical preparation for the last what ten years over a decade. So obviously, this is something that even trained militaries have to accept and understand. So some Joe Schmo nobody Yahoo saying like, oh well, you know, modern militaries have drones that use like thermal imaging. Like okay, so that doesn't mean shit. Well, yeah, but what happens your point? to see? This has always been my biggest thing. Like, okay, if they're not, the military is never going to engage in a civil war with the with the United States. They'll with the population here. They'll only be able to fund little side groups that they hope snowball. That's the only thing that can happen. Okay, uh, because the militarized police right if they try to play that angle these police have families these police chiefs have families they're in it for a paycheck guys <laughs> the minute their families get involved and it's like yo we have your entire family stand down they stand down the military has no option they get pointed in a direction it's like a bulldozer without a driver and not, not on well go ahead go no go ahead I was going to say, not only that, but people like to bring up, oh, well, we already fought a civil war, and you, you know how that turned out. I'm like, okay, number one, the Confederacy did not engage insurgency tactics to the extent that they could have because they were trying to fight an organized war. Had they, yeah. instead of engaging directly with the Union, engaged in insurgencies and guerrilla warfare the entire time, I guarantee you the war would have gone differently. I'm pretty sure Sherman would have probably still burned most of the South to the ground, but fuck that guy anyway. <laughs> in, in the first place, well, but of, but of course, but if if these generals' families were being you know captured and caught carted off, and it's like back back down one or your entire you know family line dies, the the world changes when people really know how insurgencies and how you know if if it really does kick off, like the civil wars here would be so muddled, and if like a communist front tried to you know, come together and give everyone a unified target, it would get mowed down very quickly. And the same yeah, way with any and, kind of thing. And that's the point. And that, that's why I just, I still do not understand how anybody can sit there and pretend to talk about something and just be so completely they have under, nothing better rid to of do. anything. Well, well, uh, oh well God, it's because who was it? It was it's a topical, it's a topical thing. And then they think they have to interject their opinion because of virtue signal. Well, when wasn't it, you wasn't ever watch, who, when, wasn't when one Rothbard of these things crack that, out, uh, go ahead. I was going to say, it wasn't a Rothbard that said there's no excuse for uh, uh, being ignorant of economics and still talking about economics like you know what you're talking about. Like, it's it's yeah. fine to be ignorant, but don't talk yes. like you know if you're ignorant. That that rule applies to literally anything. And uh, there's... Well, see, it, it, it applies to this. It's, it's funny you said that. Then the reason when you first when you first stated your position that I said thank you for saying that is because I, I've actually had this argument multiple times, although it wasn't presented with that. Well, they have heat seeking drones, so there's no point. But it, I it was I, Kyle I, Wagner that said that. Well, that makes sense. But just, I, just as an aside, but, but go I, on. I appreciate I, I appreciate the fact that you made that you have this position. You know, coming from where you you're history <laughs> and what you've done to be able to say that because i've had this argument multiple times with another one of our with one of our former guests uh dylan robinson who refused to uh, refused to see that argument every time i brought it up that like what about the history of insurgency and, and the history of guerrilla warfare worldwide for like ever what like no, no, no. They're, they, they'll, you know, you know, because he's, he's, you know, he's, he's former army too, and he's like, oh, nope, that will, you know, the militias out here couldn't handle it, you know, they'll get steamrolled. Nope, 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 no point. <laughs> yeah, it, that's that is such utter nonsense. The 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 populace here in the United States is better armed and trained than militaries in some countries. 
Like we we have but, enough we have enough not people trained, with but training not, and not trained better than the U.S. Army, and that's the one you'd be fighting. That's pretty much what Dylan would say to that. Where I'm from, <laughs> right? Like right Fourteen year old uh, can, boys are trained better than most militaries. I it, I would be you would be hard pressed to try and make the argument that the Viet Cong were a highly trained fighting force. They were fucking peasants. They were so they were fucking commie peasants. Well, they weren't even half of them weren't even commies, really. They just wanted the Yeah, but US when out. you've got Ch but, Chinese generals training your commie peasants or whatever. Well, no, no. No, the Chinese, no. The Chinese were training were training the North Vietnamese army. See, that that's the, the point I'm getting at. The, the insurgency peasants? was trained by the North Vietnamese. I understand that, and that's fine. I mean, the Green Berets do the same thing. But the bulk of the people fighting were not trained by um, what do you mean? Uh, what you call military advisors? Military advisors train some people, and then the whole the whole purpose of the military advisor strategy is you will train leaders, and then those leaders will train other leaders, and then so on and so forth. So that the actual number of people you you train is relatively small. The idea is that those people will then snowball, right? But the level of training at each level deteriorates naturally because it's going. It's like a photocopy, right? Yep. And, uh, so I mean the the level of expertise decreases at each level from the military advisor you get from. Yeah, and that, that's I mean, uh, I th to 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 have somebody tell me that well the U.S. military would just shut down any in, any kind of insurgency that would happen in the United States. I'm like, you realize we have no. more armament than most, like than some modern and, and, countries and, do in their organized military, and most of the people down here. Especially in the South, are vets, and who know, and who knows the yeah, geography this, of each <laughs> who knows the geography of each location better than the people yeah. that live there. I mean, like, how big is the hunting population here in Alabama or fucking Ugh. Texas? But the or problem Arkansas, is Mississippi, is that, Georgia. That it, the main conspiracy is that it won't be a U.S. military. It won't be cops. It won't be the uh, gangs or whatever Antifa. Anybody? It'll be the UN. Because of, you know, whatever, whoever pulling out or whatnot. And that's, it'll be the blue helmets. And okay, there you have to have a foreign, shit. you no, 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 you're right. But you have to have a foreign, you have to have a foreign um, invading force that can dehumanize. That's why, like, uh, f you know, American soldiers aren't most likely ever going to just open fire on American populations in an open manner, maybe in secret missions or whatnot with ulterior motives, but you know, hard, you know, a battalion getting sent out to like a town to clear it out. That's, I don't know. Well, see, that's the thing though, because it doesn't take much to, uh, to make military personnel, even American military personnel, uh, to have them dehumanize particular groups that you want to have, uh, eliminated. It, it really doesn't take a lot. I can tell you this just from personal experience, the conversations that I've had with the people that I've talked to, um, it wouldn't require much. It really would not. That's not to say that well, everybody's think the same about way. Of course, you have you know, like a bunch I said, of it's an anecdote, EU but. soldiers that you think about it. This you have a bunch of EU soldiers, uh, you, you or UN soldiers that you, uh, you know, these are welfare jobs from across the, the world, but mainly in NATO countries. And you have all these guys that you're have you're moving around these states now that have no jobs. So they're going to be training them and forcing them into the UN militaries and NATO forces, uh, conscription status, and then it'll be just that easy. Conscripted soldiers just do what they're told. They, they yeah, just but I, I mean, I, I, I would really have a hard time believing that conscripted soldiers would have enough invested in the war effort to. I don't think they'd win. I, I, I really don't think they would. I mean, like, if anything has been demonstrated by our attempts to the United States attempts, I say our. I don't have a, I don't have a frog in my pocket. It's not we. But stop uh, my, stop my if anything's been demonstrated bro. by, uh, by the U.S. military's attempts to uh, marshal a military force, a standing military force in Iraq, it's that if they're not invested in it and they really don't give a shit, they'll just fucking go the other way. They don't give a shit. I'm almost certain they're going to be less likely and less interested in fighting people from their own neighborhoods for money on the UN's behalf than, you know, not getting involved. Yeah. Not only that, but like it's the fucking UN. What the fuck are they going to do? Without without the <laughs> well, without I mean, the United States, the UN is fucking worthless. 
fucking that, sitting well, there holding their dicks in their it, hand. It is until they have a unified enemy and the EU collapses and this is all that's left and there's all these, you know, it's it's a... I don't know. It's a shell game I, right I think, now. I think There's a lot getting, of stuff going on. I think we're getting... <laughs> you mentioned rabbit holes. Uh, yeah, we, we might be getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> but the point is, anybody who tries to make the claim that like just because uh, the U.S. military has all this advanced stuff and whatever, that they would be able to defeat any insurgency, clearly has not been paying attention to jack shit. I think those people are just not taking into account how big... You know how much land there actually is here, and how many people are all, and where people are all holed up, and you know, again, who know who knows their areas better than those people, and, and that's always what it comes down to. That's exactly you know what you were referring to before about the v, the, you know, the Viet Cong and how they actually did that. Well, yeah, because they knew the area better than the U.S. troops did, <laughs> and they knew how to take advantage of their of the uh, of the land. So. Or like hell, the Taliban in Afghanistan. So, yeah. Supposedly, we wiped them out. Oh, look, guess who's back? Well, no, yeah, well, yeah. Af- Afghanistan, of course, is the greatest example because how many, you know, it's the place that they, where the place where empires go to die. That's what its nickname. Because yes, yes. Nobody I was just has, about to say that. Nobody has ever been able to actually take it because the layout of the land that you know the the people that the people that have lived there for generations and generations and generations know it better than anybody. And they can use it to their advantage, like th- that. No other invading force has ever had a uh, had a chance to even come close to uh, competing with. And there's a th- there's there there's a lot of there's a lot of space out here that uh, the same type of things that could happen. And I, I think those people don't take that into account. I mean, sure, do they have the big do they have do they have the big weapons? Yeah, but you're also talking about. I mean, when we're going into the way ahead machine and thinking what you know what if as dave's scenario plays out if it takes that route okay well then yeah then all the people from the armed forces now who aren't going to turn against their countrymen can still probably access a lot of those things before the government can actually do anything about it like i'm pretty sure whole military units would just be like yeah no i don't think so yeah, and they're not just going to go home. They're going to they're going to take some of their toys and go home, you know, because in that situation, what else are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. I also think well, that I these mean, people that make this argument military coups are crazy. So, yeah, I also think that a lot of people that make these are these arguments severely underestimate the morale factor of fighting for your home turf. There's something to be said for fighting for your home, for where you live, for where the people that you know and care about live. And that uh, that is a force multiplier. I don't care who you I don't care who you ask. Anybody familiar with the subject will tell you it is a force multiplier. It boosts morale in situations where morale would otherwise just be completely non-existent. There there is nothing like having to defend your home from invaders to ma- to turn somebody into a fighter. Well, of course, because you know you're at, that, yeah. at that at that point your back's against the wall. If you don't win, you likely lose your homeland. So you have to fight with, yeah. with everything you got. Uh, back up against the wall. That's why I think cryptocurrencies, hyperlocalization of things. I know these are uh, arguments that are, you know, the eco- economic, the economic minded hate. But I, I think that this this fake, you know, Romanesque empire esque world we live in, where everything is so off site and so not natural right now is is going to come down and i think the internet and i think decentralization and i think cryptocurrency is doing that and guns are going to play a huge role in all of that so ghost gunners you know those are basically the de facto stamp of guns being decentralized because now remington arms who is has all these regulations they have to abide and all these other uh, you know arms manufacturers have all these regulations to abide those are gone. Those don't matter. They, those people are losing in the market now because you, you can print whatever kind of gun you want, and it's just, just a matter of a time. Well, you can just print I, a whole I, gun. I don't know about all that, man. There's just like you know, it's the same thing happened as it's happened every time before. Right after the shooting, sales spiked, like legit sales through. You know, so they're. I don't think they're doing that badly, and. 
while while I think it just I love the I love the fact that just uh, defense distributive uh, exists, and I love Cody Wilson and everything that he's done and continues to do. Uh, but it's still not as mainstream as uh, as I as I would like it to be. So there's still plenty of people that, especially every time one of these mass shootings happen, as soon as any Democrat gets out there and starts threatening uh or or begging for Oof. new new regulations sales start sky, sales of uh, guns and ammo yeah. skyrocket and here's, they did it again a couple of days afterwards so because they i know they had also people had also been talking about the fact that you know gun sales had dipped since trump took office you know whereas they had continued to climb during obama's You're right years oh every like week it was like record gun sales yeah, he's, I think I he's think a, the, he's, the, he, he is. He, I mean, he can really effectively take the title of the most effective. But that was the case when the uh, of the world. Bill Clinton was president, right? As well, it happens. Uh, it, I, it ha- I think. So. Well, well, yeah. Well, know. no. Well, it 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 did, and then they put the ban yeah. down during Clinton because Clinton. Yeah, Clinton was the one who put Brady the Bill, right? who put the who put the yeah. uh, a, a quote unquote assault rifle uh, ban down. Right. I wish they would re- repeal yeah. that. That is a de facto affront to the Second Amendment. They did. That was um, the one they did. It's, or, no, repealed it. It essentially sunset. no. I'm talking about no. The he put it in place. Ban. He put the assault weapons ban in place, and then they it, um he he uh, it either sunsetted it or they finally no. It doesn't exist anymore. They got yeah, rid of it during Bush. For the Brady Bill. The Brady Bill is no longer in force. Yeah. So I can just go buy a fully auto without a class whatever. No, fully, that's that's a, that was a that was a different that was a different act. Okay, I'm talking auto. about the assault weapons ban, the the automatic wi- weapons ban. That's stupid. That's the direct. Yeah, that wasn't the that well. wasn't the Brady Bill. That was that was something. All, else yeah, that was years before that. That was something. The Brady else. Bill was about magazines and other. Stuff, well, it was right? about yeah, it was about AKs, AR-15s, whatever you know, certain classes of weapons, and that. Okay, uh, so this is what that's, that's been gone. Yeah, this is what Julian Assange was saying. This is the last thing he said lately. The FBI is giving guns to the mentally ill to attack people, then leaping in to save the day. Cameras rolling. Okay. Yeah, I can believe that. Uh, so but they didn't i i don't save know the day oh but didn't they well because it, it wasn't that wasn't the official story that he shot himself so how did he yeah. how did they save the day <laughs> he 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 allegedly killed 59 is it 59 i think was the final time? well if if we would if we wouldn't have had the second amendment he wouldn't have been able to shoot himself in the head so the fbi protects our constitution right and, Look, uh, if we just got rid of guns, <laughs> nobody would kill anybody with guns. Okay, this is so simple and common sense. Guys. You know, if Jeez. you take out gang murders and you take out suicides from the gun deaths, it is laughable. Well, yeah, all, like Andre. All guns. Uh, well, Andre pointed out even with those. Well, Andre pointed out the ridiculously no number even with some of those in anyway. It's it's still really low, in, including yeah. including suicides, gun deaths total, suicides and homicides is one point two percent. If you take out Suicides. Suicides. It's so, 0.4%. So suicides so is it's twice less as many. Half. Yeah, suicides is 0.8. Yeah. Imagine if you walked up and you ate 0.4% of a piece of pie. Do you think you would ever be full or no? Would you even notice that pie was gone? I know that's oh. rough to talk about human lives like that, but if we're playing this huge centralized what are you talking about? It's statistical rough to talk about pie like that. Fuck. All right. All yeah, right. only getting that much. Before we, before we I know. I know that I you had this pie. huge amount. Of, we're looking through this 300 million person lens that the state forces us to look through, through with our statistics. And when you strip away that 300 million, you really look at certain areas. If you take out like, why are certain areas in Texas where there's like 21 guns for every person have the lowest crime rates? Period. Doesn't make sense, does it? If huh. guns are dangerous. Yeah, I was Does gonna say sense? if you if you don't if you don't impute purpose behind firearms, there should be firing shots everywhere down there. Yeah. No, nope. well, uh, yeah, but now, again, if you impute if you impute a purpose to firearms that isn't there, then yeah, of course it doesn't make sense. It's completely preposterous. But if you recognize that yeah. firearms are no different than any other tool, and their good or badness is dependent entirely on who uses them and for what purpose, exactly, then, yeah, it makes sense. And, and and just like everything else, just like every other inanimate object, whether or not it's it's used for a moral or immoral purpose is entirely in the hands of the moral actor handling them. You can't impute Hallelujah. moral action on something that is not a moral agent. Fuck. Exactly. Correct. 
And, that rock beat me and, up. And, nope. and, and again, if, if we're, if we're going to look, you know, if we're just going to look at things, you know, yeah, let's just look at the pure historical record. Historically, who has done the most damage with guns? Governments. The state. You know, the, the state. The and, state and, yep. and, and especially because, you know, the, this is now being dubbed the, uh, <laughs> the, worst ma- the worst mass shooting you know, in history. And it's like, no, no. Okay. If, if you're still going by the single shooter claim, okay, maybe then you have to clarify that it's maybe by the single because, like, you know, wounded knee is still a lot worse. Plenty of other government uh, <laughs> atrocities against gigantic groups of people, uh, just, not even just across the world and through history, just here in the United States. Uh, <laughs> yeah, those type of things. Just the ones we can prove. So 100%. they, yeah. So they, you know, so so they've done the most damage. So e- the even- biggest thing I've taken away from this continual gun debate, Jeremy, and I, I guarantee you're going to agree with me on this, okay? Is the liberals, whatever you want to call them, these people pushing the anti-gun narrative. Out of one side of their mouth, they want to say that no one should have guns. And then out of the other side of their mouth, no, my, my bad. They they say no one should have guns except for authority and police officers. And then, then out of the other side of their mouth, they say all cops are racist, evil, and, and scum and pig. Now, oh, why yes. would you want all the evil, racist, scum, pigs to have all of the guns? That makes zero absolute sense to me if you use your brain. Well, yes, yeah, so a lot of them fall into that, or they're 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 all you know they are rightly, I would say, outraged about po- police brutality and the fact that you know people are getting you know pe- people are getting killed, but then they still hold they they forget all about that when it comes to these instances and are like, well, no, only the cops should have it. It's like, wait a minute, weren't you just complaining about the fact that cops kill people last week? <laughs> well, m- maybe, American maybe cops they- have the murder rate of freaking Guatemala. Do you guys understand that? Higher than maybe Guatemala. maybe they maybe they want the the police to not have guns and they're just comfortable with the police beating the crap out of people with nightsticks. I get the feeling that if if police were just beating people up with nightsticks, they may not have a problem with it because no gun violence, right? Well, I don't without get guns. If they so didn't you, use guns, if they just die, beat people, well, it depends. Well, it depends. Are they, are they be- they'll kill you dead. Are they beating a white or a black guy? Because you know. Oh if one of us well, is, I mean, yeah, obviously, if, if they're be, if they're beating a white guy, then it's not even a problem. This well, exactly. So. He's probably just an <laughs> asshole who deserved it. He had probably just an him. asshole who deserved it. He was privileged, so yeah. he deserved like me. the beating. Yeah, he he, he had it coming to him. All right. <laughs> On that note, I think uh, we should probably get wrapping <laughs> up. But you guys have uh, uh, anything else in closing, Andre, Dave? Uh thank you guys so much for doing this show with me. Andre, it was a pleasure meeting you in real life. I yes, finally, uh, it's about time. Sorry, it took so long. So, yeah, you guys, uh, literally, how far away? Are you, two two hours away from each other? We're like th- two or three hours away. So I mean, it's just like I don't know, but uh, we we got to hang out. It was nice. Uh, I wished uh, wish you didn't have to study and had to go back. That would have been nice if you could have stayed for a night and uh, hung around. But uh, man. I have nothing else to say. This this show is fun. To, this this gun debate has raged and raged and raged, and and I feel like it's either going to come to a pimple and pop, and the the Second Amendment is going to be honored and respected, or they're going to try to fell swoop it, and civil war is going to break off. And I really hope they don't do that, because I don't like death. So yeah, I prefer I prefer people not die needlessly either. And I you know I'm just like all the rest of you guys. I, I'm no fan of aggression. But I mean, if it, but I'm no fan yeah. of, I'm no fan of violence in general. I would prefer everybody just to deal with everybody else peacefully. But if it comes down to it, I mean, if it's, if it's a fight that they want, they're probably going to get one. Oh yeah. And hard. I, and it also, it feels like another part of me when I'm looking at this thing, just if I pull myself as an outside, you know, person looking at the whole charade, <laughs> uh, it's like they're putting gasoline on the situation and they're trying to spark it if they keep they keep like striking the big lighter and it won't go off but they got like they got all the gas poured out on the situation i don't know what's stopping it uh i just don't think that you're going to get a unified front of gun owners saying hey we need to shoot these people to stop this or we need we, we everyone in america that values their second amendment needs to stop these people uh I, I don't think that we're going to come to that point and any mass scale. I think a few people might try to pop off and do something. They'll just get mowed down and everybody else will be like, whoa, this ain't going to work at all. 
So, I mean, I, I told you guys weeks ago that uh, the president and the J JSOC and all the other people at the top, they've already declared Antifa as a terrorist organization. But most people don't understand this is Antifa has been funded and completely ran by George Soros and the CIA. Okay. Same way with ISIS. They're now combining the two. They're trying to merge this radical Islam with this radical communist leftist thing so they can just fund one group, in my opinion. And that's right, what we're, we're getting. That's what we're getting right here. We're getting these patsies set up that are going to be portrayed as representing these groups to spark off uh, radical I, I movements don't, I don't, from okay, logical, they, they, I don't want to go down these people. rabbit holes. <laughs> Yes, I know yes, we're trying to end the show. I was trying to end the show, and I was trying to get that's, away without you going. That's down this that's stuff. what uh, that's all I had to say for the show. <laughs> I think I think when you look at it through a different lens, a lot more makes sense. Yeah, yeah fair enough. Lens. Fair enough. All right. <laughs> On that note, again, we will get closing out. Uh, again, uh, th thank you everybody who continues to donate and. Please, uh, if you aren't already, consider checking out our Patreon page because, yes, there's finally new content and there will be more new content coming out. Patreon.com slash Seeds of Liberty. And also in the show notes will be all the other ways you can now donate to us, including the mm -hmm. darn Amazon link, which they still haven't given us any credit for, but we also haven't gotten any clicks because I don't think Paul has gotten that up on the, uh, on the website just yet. <laughs> and, Paul, I know you listen. Get it up on the website, please. <laughs> uh, we love you, Paul. No, I do. Again, I, Paulie Gordon, I, I love him. And <laughs> he's done a lot of work for us. But I did mention it to him like over a week or two ago at this point. I don't even know. But anyway, so yeah. So again, hashtag please donate. We could all use it. And uh, otherwise, thank you everybody for listening. This has been the Season of Liberty Podcast. All of our information can be found at solpodcast.org. And we'll catch you next time. Peace. Peace in the Middle East. Are you sick of seeing peaceful people being locked away for victimless crimes? Instead of trying to get out of jury duty, consider taking it so you can do the right thing. A single juror with a conscience can send someone home to their family instead of to a jail cell. If there's no victim, how can there be a crime? And if the judge or prosecutor are keeping you in the dark, what are they trying to hide? You can vote your conscience instead of being a pawn of the state. For more information, Google jury nullification or check out the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Cell 411 is a free app for Android and iOS that replaces government controlled 911. Cell 411 allows you to preset a group of friends or private organizations to show up in any emergency. Cell 411 is a nightmare for the state because it proves their so called services aren't needed. Cell 411 has had thousands of installs, and of course, it's covered by the Bipcot No Government License. Cell 411 because your friends won't shoot you when you're in trouble. Without the government, who would build the emergency services? You and Cell 411. Get it today at GetCell411.com. That's GetCell411.com.